uh, uh, my major focus would be what are those spectral databases we generate in country using both BNR and MR spectroscopy. And uh, what are those models for soil fertility and quality as we, uh, again and again, we are talking of importance of the soil health. Then, of course, to go on the regional scale, we need to look for something on the airborne or satellite, how we can upscale from lab base to the satellite level, that's the digital soil mapping. So these three part I'm going to cover. And uh, uh, this is in collaboration with a number of institutes, uh, the ICR institutes, and also Indian Space Research Organizations, IIT, uh, uh, Indian Institute of Technology, Kharagpur and Bombay, and some of the state agriculture in both cities with whom we collaboratively work together for all this purpose. So I must thank to each and everyone who has contributed for this presentation and uh, uh, to making a uh, kind of a, uh, uh, a table of discussion, what are the challenges, what we have. I think this is what a basic slide, uh, uh, many things has been talked, I don't need to talk more on this. What are the challenges for the sensing of soil? The three big challenges is never soil is naked as you see other spectra of the vegetation or any feature. So that's the biggest challenge what we have when you go to the field conditions. And the spectra, what you get in the lab condition altogether is going to be different in the field conditions. So how to address that, that's the biggest challenge. Another is uh, the technical challenge remains is soil spectra, if you see, is a very smooth curve, not like unlike your vegetation spectra, a lot of ups and downs. So that's what the biggest technical challenge what we have. To, we don't have much in the ISS to characterize like in case of vegetation, you have so much. So this is again a second technical challenge to uh, address to if you look at BNR also MR spectroscopy. Again, there are many chemical chromophores which is very dynamic and may change the soil spectra. And Dr. Budiman uh, has uh, highlighted many of them. Morning and evening, the same soil, the spectra will be different because of the variation in the soil moisture. So these are the complex factors which is going to affect a composite effect on the soil reflectance. So how to segregate that and characterize with respect to the soil fertility, that's what the biggest challenge. So that's the reason why we came up with the spectroscopy and we in international level try to come out with some kind of a science, how we can address all these issues. Because since you have a spectral data, a very nanometer interval, very narrow nanometer interval, so you have a unique interactions with a parameter you are looking at, and that's how we can characterize. Again, so the challenge remains is, what is that spectroscopy we should use it? So here, what I am showing is the BNR spectrometer and spectrometer we use to have the spectral library. So many uh, spectra has been generated. And very recently, we started with, of course, uh, strengthened by ICRAF with Indian Soil Science and also other institutes, what we have in IRA and many other institutes. We have uh, Brooker Optics, MR, observance uh, instrument where we are able to get the spectral measurement. And also we have emissivity spectra measurement of the FTR that is a, again a DNP instrument which can be captured and go for the uh, uh, kind of characterizing analyzing. And you can put all this together, the BNR spectra and also MR spectra together to look at how the spectral behavior is changes starting from 400 nanometer to 16,400 nanometer. And you can see the kind of signal which goes down if you look at the reflectance beyond the Bainer spectra. So that's what the challenge remains with us. But as at the beginning of the initial, uh, uh, Professor Keith has very nicely told how, how the, what is the potential of MIR with respect to BNR. So this is what the, about the ground non-imaging sensors. When you come back to the satellite level imaging sensors, you can see uh, you, from a single pixel how you can go to airborne and also satellite level to go for a regional scale soil assessment. That remains a big challenge. And that's again, we have the effort starting from ground imaging spectrometer, airborne imaging spectrometer, manned aerial vehicle, and also satellite. So some of the highlights I'm going to do over here is how we can do from the ground, how we can go do from airborne and also satellite derived uh, spectral data and also modeling in a regional scale. So this is a very ambitious program, which was very recently done in collaboration with the uh, uh, JPL NASA in uh, spearheaded by ISRO uh, Space Applicant Center. And you can see the large team who are involved in this ambitious program, collecting spectro airborne spectrometer data all over different part of the country, around 57 diverse science sites, 
with a uh, an RS, with the ISRO flight having a sensor up from the JPL and getting the data on the L2 product, which is a refractance product, and characterize that with respect to need of the country. That's what the biggest challenge. Fortunately, in collaboration with other institutes, we we participated in this science campaign in number of uh, sites with uh, different dates, and we could characterize both on the ground and also airborne spectra in BNR 400 to 2500 nanometer. So looking at the spectral data and data analytics, so you have a ground spectrometer starting from BNR range to MIR, either observance, emissivity, or reflectance, or you have a average NG airborne imaging spectrometers where we have a reflectance starting from 0.38 to 2.51 micrometer. Then these are the different approaches which uh, spectral pre-processing do and go for modeling different uh, multivariate modeling to characterize the, uh, the, the spectra to retrieve some of the soil parameter. And already these things have been talked in detail in my uh, previous speakers. I don't need to talk more on that. As we don't have any indices for the spectral sensors, spectral refractance, so we can go for some kind of data mining for the spectral bands using different approaches and use them if at all we need to derive some local sensor. If at all we don't need to look for the spectrometer, we can characterize what is that sensitive band which can be used for different parameters. Again, we have multivariate approach. Of course, a, a lot has been talked about the PLS, so that's the most common and very popular model which is used for this. Of course, recently machine learning and deep learning has really a uh, great advantage with respect to this. So you look at the, some of the applications quickly, just also same soil with the artificially removing organic carbon content with the hydrogen peroxide treatment. You can see how the spectral signature is changing. So, these are the basic studies which we have been doing with organic carbon, same also with the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium to understand what is that part of the spectrum which is really getting affected. So this is to understand basic physics and spectrometry behind it, how it behaves. Coming back to the soil sampling, we do different stratified soil sampling. We have the standard protocols to go for the soil sampling for the spectral data collections. This is again under a program on the GST, this is Chaudhary et al. from uh, ICR Research Center from um, Barapani, you can see this is a very uh, difficult terrain where how do we do the soil sampling for the soil spectra. You can see the stratified layers of the land use land cover and the proximity of the uh, soil sampling from the roads. So taking care of that, you are able, we are able to see huge amount of spectra which has been collected, but how the spectra behaves with respect to different land use patterns, you can see that. So this is what the soil is, the indicator of the, the way we deal with the, so, uh, with the uh, soil, the way the land use is, and the way the transformation taking place. So once we, so like this, we have around 10,000 plus spectra generated in country in collaboration with all the institute I have listed over there. And we try to put over a uh, library which has been developed, again, uh, hosted at IIT Bombay, that is under the program of Network Project on Imaging Spectroscopy, where we, we define what are the that database metadata has to go to in the library and that has been generated and comparing with the inference level library what my previous speaker has been talking about. Coming back to the modeling part, this is what the different part of the modeling we try to do with the reflectance. We're using spectrometer, using airborne data, using the observance, the group uh, uh, optics and the emissivity. You could see the kind of ask RPD, these are the, <coughs> sorry, Stratical indicator tells how good is the spectral uh, modeling for those parameters. And if you look at comparative studies, what has been done in the ground and uh, in, uh, outside, and also in case of uh, satellite level using Hyperion sensors, the long back this study has been done in 2009. You can see the kind of analysis which tells how ground spectra collected and pre-processed and done in the lab condition it looks to be wonderful, having a wonderful ASCII value of something around above 0.6. When you go down to the field conditions, never soil is open and naked. Some noises are there because of the soil surface is covered with many things. Again, the, you have a, a noise in the sig signal. And that's what it goes down. You see the red bars, how it goes down. When you go to the satellite level like Hyperion, where you have 30 by 30 meter pixel size, a lot of heterogeneity is taken care. Again, the prediction model goes down. So this is what the, when you go for scale up, how the uncertainty is going up. So that's what the example over here. That shows the India map having so many spectral database for which we have generated over the years. And some of the studies doing through data mining, what are those sensitive bands for different parameters, those has been identified. Coming back to a few applications, what has been done quickly 
Again, this is 2009. Uh, Prabhupada Das is here. I had a Kalaku with his student. We try to do spectral transform function, similar as what soil scientists use called spectral transform function. If at all we are able to retrieve the parameter from the soil using uh, spectral data, why don't we do directly spectral transformation and retrieve those parameters? So one of the most difficult parameters is hydraulic parameters and which we are able to do, retrieve that with a good accuracy when you compare it with the conventional approach. So this is one approach which has been done. Similarly, we try to do with other parameters. Again, coming back to the soil quality, these are the parameters which are taken together for composite soil quality index monitoring. Whether spectral data can be used for the soil quality monitoring. So that was the question which was addressed by Dr. Sina and his group. And in the different cropping system, we try to see is possible. That means some of the parameter which was not possible to retrieve from the spectra we have taken from conventional approach and spectrally derived approach and combine them together and derive the hybrid soil quality index. So whatever conventional approach, that's nonlinear weighted soil quality index, and you look at the hybrid soil quality index, hardly there is any difference. That means there is a possibility, there is an opportunity to look at the soil quality from the spectrometer. Coming back to average engine detail. So this is what the raw data you have, average engine and uh, raw data in the ground using the spectro radiometer. And this is from air one data, how you get over here. And going through some pre-processing, you are able to see the kind of modeling we try to do and evaluate those models. Again, we could see PLSR looks to be better than support vector machine or mass models or different parameters what we are looking at. So if you see, if we want to mine those data to sensitive bands, we try to use variable important projection system along with PLSR and try to model that. Again, mathematically transforming the spectral data from the past derivative, second derivative, again, average changing. Of course, the result says only the raw reflectance data looks to be wonderful than the derivatives. And we could see how the, uh, the R square value is wonderful with respect to pre-processed data for the ground and also air one data. And finally, if you would are able to data mining them and putting them together. And you can see this is one of the airborne site which was taken in the Raichu, Karnataka, south part of the country. And you can see this is a barren soil. And this is what the organic carbon map of that area which was created. What I mean to say over here is if at all we are able to do in the lab conditions, what are those modifications we need to do when you go to the field and when you go to the airborne level or the satellite level to generate a regional soil mapping like this. So this is what to try to attempt. Similarly, we are able to try to do also different soil parameters. For example, here, electrical conductivity. I'm just giving an example. As I told you, different data mining approaches we try to do is using uh, factor rule loading, regression coefficients, and VIPs. And those are the sensitive bands. Using that, we are able to generate an issue map. So similarly, we created for nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium because of the time constant. I'm not going to go into detail of that. So, we try to evaluate also ground spectra, what you have collected using a ground spectrometer, and also airborne average energy from the JPL. And also you had a satellite called Hyperion again from the NASA. You can see the spectral signature, how the spectral reflectance changes, what the signal noise ratio, how it varies. And this is an evaluation which has been done in uh, Orissa uh, and try to model this, I, again using MLR and PLS models. And we try to evaluate that, how good they are behaving when you go in a lab condition to the field conditions. So coming back to the last part of the story, how you can go to the digital soil mapping. I think uh, the authorities are here, Dr. Budiman Minasni, Keith Srifor, and a group of, from Mark Whitney, they are here. So I don't need to tell what is the digital soil mapping, how we can retrieve and one of the covariates from the remote sensing data and pull them together and go for mathematical transformation and retrieve those parameters. So before going to that, this is what a data which has been generated in the uh, uh, rubber growing regions of the Southern India. And you can see the huge around you know, 500 plus spectral data has been generated. And these are the different multivariate models which has been tried. And you can see the kind of uh, the uh, R square value and the uh, potential of this model, how it has been come, come to. Then when you do with respect to uh, uh, soil organic carbon and the evaluation you can see, how the predicted organic carbon and measured organic carbon with the R-square value, something around 0.8 is there. And when you see in case of a black soil where the average energy site was there, we could see, uh, again, the similar kind of uh, studies having a wonderful results, but of course the 
uh, ASCII value was something around 0.6 and um, 0.8. So when we try to do uh, uh, digital soil mapping, we want to try to take environmental covariates, and those are the uh, airborne data like average energy data to look at those uh, spectral uh, information for the soil, SITM data for different environmental covariates. We try to use, again, a new innovations, Sentinel data, Sentinel-2 in September and December when the crop stand was there, putting the crop stand together, how we can get the uh, soil map generated. Many times that was a challenge. Unless until soil is barren, how we'll get the soil uh, mapping done. So here, this is innovation which has been done. You can look at this average data. Only average data has been taken. Going through the uh, principal component analysis when 20 and variable was there, when you, are, you see the, how the ask value is. When you look at only terrain pattern parameter, 11 terrain parameter, how, what is the ask value? So like this, when you put them all together, 54 variables, how the ask value has gone up, something around 0.58 in the calibration, in the validation is 0.5. When you go, when the validation, it was 0.45, we look at the residual error. Again, we went for the you know, um, ordinary pigging and putting them together, the, uh, uh, then putting that residual area in a special scale, adding with the model what we have done, we went for the regression creating and this is what the digital soil map, which has been created for the organic carbon of that region. Again, with the standing crop. So this is what done for the uh, organic carbon, same has been done for the available peak and same has been done for potassium. So, so this is what in very not cell, very precisely I wanted to tell and though we have been uh, working on many aspects, how we can address some of the uh, issues or challenges in country with respect to the soil health care program. So this is again a program under which we have been working and the spectral uh, side, which you could see this is a network program on imaging spectroscopy and applications where almost 37 centers are involved and we create huge spectral library for soil. Again, we are around uh, six institutes are involved for agriculture. Uh, I think 74 research scholars working for PhD. Again, very recently, with the, uh, ICR has started a precision agriculture uh, program and network program where our major focus is looking at the soil health from the spectroscopy. So the major challenge is what remains is, what is that standard spectral library with varying soil attribute? Maybe today we should be able to discuss that, how Indian soil library we can generate to have, because Indian ecosystem is altogether different and we have a huge, variable to with respect to soil database, what we turn it with. Then how we can uh, put both optical and thermal range uh, data, both MR and MECV data together and you know, with the metadata you know, so that we can have a standard library for that purpose. Again, we have a different sensors starting from uh, VNR spectrometers to uh, MR spectrometers. There are different companies who supply different instruments. How we should go for intercalibration of the sensors standardize those methodology. Again, when you have a imaging sensors on, the, on, on a UAV, you have again different kind of sensors available, how you can put them together. And what is that SOP we should have for pre-processing and data analytics so that we converge to a common approach. How portability is, how possibility is soil fertility assessment, even if in the lab condition also using spectrometer, that will be a great contribution to the country. Of course, uh, Professor Keith has told Already there is an instrument that developed with then So that's what the local sense of a rapid assessment of soil health from uh, spectroscopy. Again, we would be very happy to be part of the global soil information.